Hey everyone, Mike Miller with the Herald Times, joined by our IU basketball columnist Jeremy Price, coming to you from Assembly Hall, the site of uh, Indiana's fourth game in eight days. Uh, third in the last five, it's been one heck of a stretch. A um, whole lot of basketball being played here the last few days, Jeremy. Yes, uh, and, and I, I would say that some of us are just as punchy, if not more so than the team at this point. So. Well, yeah, I actually um, I wasn't here at Friday's game, right. so you've seen them all. I have seen them all. You all four have seen them all. Games. You will remember one of them at least, the yeah. Carolina <laughs> game. But uh, the last two, maybe not so much. Well, I don't know. The one Friday night was shockingly entertaining. Uh, With Duran and Juan. Duran, Juan, and Tim Priller. I mean, it was a three-headed, <laughs> mo- a three-headed monster that <laughs> on Friday night. So well, let that be a lesson to me today. Um, nah, not not so not so much memorable yeah. today. Well, I will say the only thing that was there, there was one thing that was truly memorable. <laughs> one thing, one thing yes. I will never, honestly, ever forget. Uh, Tom Crean called Juwan Moore, or excuse me, Thomas Bryant over the bench, uh, like 30 seconds left in the first half. Right after Thomas had made uh, you know, hustle play right before, uh, he calls him over and, and chest bumps him. He goes in and chest bumps him, and it was like this totally. Frankly, it was it was it, it was it, it's not what you expect from Tom Crean during a game. Um, right, right. And uh, or, or, or after a game, or after a game, or before a game, or before a game, or <laughs> any time at all. <laughs> It was just this moment, and, and I guess the, the members of the crowd who caught it were all just like, "Wow!" Like there was like a, you could sense the laughter. There's some applause. Like it was actually a cool moment. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, I, it kind of served a purpose, honestly. Like at, at the end of a grueling stretch, uh, Tom Crean thought he just needed to maybe provide an extra jolt um, to a guy like Bryant, who wasn't really involved necessarily uh, in the offense, but it, it was involved in other ways. But um, just you know, at the end of a, of a difficult stretch, it was it was sort of a jolt. Going yeah. into the halftime break and um, served as the most memorable part of the day. Yeah, I, well, as Crean kind of put it, it was just sort of a reminder to have fun, and it, you know, for Thomas Bryant especially, as as emotional and energetic as he is, you know, it, it's easy for that to turn into frustration for him a little bit. And, and, it and did I think, at uh, yeah, and it, it clearly did, and especially when you're again playing that fourth game, you know, it it's maybe not as fun as it usually is. Uh, certainly not as much fun as it was on Wednesday night against North Carolina. So, yeah, this, this was just sort of a moment of levity, uh, a moment of appreciation for, you know, Bryant had, had a rebound, kind of got it knocked loose, jumped on the floor, and then wound up rolling out of bounds with it on the play. And, you know, was obviously disappointed that he lost the ball out of bounds, but it was like, you know, that's okay. The, the effort's there. The, the energy's there. We're trying. That's what we need. And that's really what Indiana needed out of this game today was was – to have the energy level, the success, and basically just to finish things off the way they needed to finish them off. And while there was obviously some ups and downs and, you know, good parts of the game and not so good parts of the game, yeah. they did what they needed to do. Without question. As you mentioned, started out really strong, got out to, I think, a, um, we talking? 15-2. Uh, 15-2, to two. 15 to two, yeah. And that the, the two uh, <laughs> should not a, have been any, actually. Yeah, that, should have been zero. Was, that was a total freakish. It was a, it was a fluke play that just kind of pinballed around on the on the backboard, around the glass, around the rim, and finally dropped in. And uh, for about uh, five or six minutes, that was the only points uh, Southeast Missouri had. By the way, uh, final score, 83-55. I don't think we mentioned that yet. Uh, but that's, again, you knew that. But that's not important. You knew that. No, not really, honestly, in games like this. I mean, let's just move on. Um, but yeah, no, th- there was a point, uh, I guess talking about 452 left in the first half, uh, Southeast Missouri had cut it to a five point game. Mm-hmm. Um, and, uh, at that point it was kind of like you were seeing a lull from Indiana, I think, which had gone four or five minutes without a field goal. Um, you know, there was some easy lines to the basket, just kind of what you see from a team that's kind of going through one of those lulls from playing, playing through the fatigue that they've had through the last seven, eight days. And then you have the, the end of the half and, of course, the start to the, the second half, which was uh, a period where you saw Indiana again lock in defensively against an inferior Ohio Valley uh, opponent. And um, by, uh, I think, the nine, nine and a half minute mark of the second half, IU was up by 29 points, which at that point was obviously a game high. They'd gotten up by 32 at, at some point very, very late, but they had just kind of run away with that point coming out of the uh, locker room at halftime. Yeah, I thought the the one probably memorable moment uh, there in the second half was right at the start of the second half. First possession, Josh Newkirk commits a turnover, his third of the game. Crean immediately yanks him, puts in Curtis Jones. Curtis Jones scores five points in a row. The lead pushes to 18. I I don't think it was ever less than 18 after that, pretty much. And then Newkirk came back in about three minutes later and didn't commit another turnover the rest of the game. And turnovers were obviously probably the most glaring area of 
deficiency in this game 18. today. Yeah, that's that's a little too many. But then again, that's only one over the season average coming into today, which ranks 333rd nationally. It's been a problem all year. It's been a problem last year. And uh, frankly, I don't, I don't see it getting cleaned up right now. I mean, I guess you can forgive it somewhat given uh, you know the back-to-back-to-back-to-back. To back to back to back. But again, I mean, this is not something that's just been popping up due to the schedule. This right. is something that has been something this team has just kind of struggled with, honestly, for the last year or so. Yeah. And... You know, it's probably not going to get tons better. It just, it's going to have to improve a little bit, but it's probably something that in some ways this team just lives with and hopes that more often than not, it can do enough other good things to overcome it. And on a night like tonight, and, and really throughout this week, the defense has raised its level to a point where you can survive that kind of night and do the job. It's not just the offense sort of clicking on all cylinders when it's not turning it over. Right. It's that the defense is, is doing a pretty good job, like at the outset of this game, like at the outset of the second half. Um, you know, Obviously, it's tough to keep that focus and, and be locked in for an entire game, but by and large, for at least significant stretches, Indiana was just that. Yeah, exactly. There's, uh, I will say that you, we mentioned Deron Davis and Juwan Morgan uh, for the nights they had on Friday. Um, again, I thought they, they both played uh, really strong. Juwan came out very strong, actually. Nine points in the first, uh, I guess, first 10 or so, 11 minutes of the first half. Yeah. Uh, but he was typical Juwan pretty much the rest of the way. And Deron Davis, was four, again. 4-4 four from the field yeah, again. Four, four, so. so now he's 12-12 12 for 12 the last two games, and yeah. I guess hasn't missed field goal since the second half against UNC. Yeah, yeah late, late, mid-late second half against UNC was the last field goal attempt he missed, so... And hit another three today. You know, the mm-hmm. three he hit on Friday night was the first make of the season. Hit another one today. I think that makes him two of nine on the on the year. But, uh, you know, he shot it pretty well from three last year. So yeah. it was a little bit of a surprise how much he was struggling from that standpoint early on this season. So maybe rounding into form a little bit there and mm-hmm. uh, taking good advantage of the absence of OG Ananobi once again. Yeah, and that's something that uh, I think a lot of guys are kind of filling in right now. And obviously, you know, it's... I don't say easier against these type of opponents, but um, you know it, 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 it allows guys like Robert Johnson and James Blackman to really wrestle in there and get some of the rebounds they've been getting. I mean, they've been doing a really nice job just rebounding the ball in the last two, three games. Uh, and again, Deron Davis coming off the bench. And uh, what's been interesting there is they've been playing him with uh, Thomas Bryant a little more and uh, being able to see how that duo fares because that, that could get interesting at some points once we get into the new year and uh, you have that, uh, that arrow in your quiver. Yeah, I... What I like about that combination is a lot of times when Thomas Bryant is on the floor by himself, he doesn't either he's not active enough posting up or the team is not active enough seeking him out posting up, and he's more comfortable just floating to that perimeter and looking for a three-point shot. Or uh, actually had one sequence today where he handled the ball and made a really nice dish to Newkirk under the basket for a, for a layup. Uh, had another nice skip pass in the second half, I think, for a three for somebody. I forget mm-hmm. who it was. But Thomas Bryant's obviously a little bit more comfortable on the perimeter. Davis is obviously very comfortable operating in the lane in the post around the paint. So you put those two together, it gives you a nice inside-out combo with your four or five men playing together. And I think that's what Indiana's looking at, being able to do more going forward and increasing that presence on the glass as well. No question about it. Out uh, rebounded a, a smallish uh, Southeast <laughs> Missouri State. This, uh, is it Southeast Missouri State? I, we were struggling with this post game actually. It's Southeast Missouri. Either way, Semo. That's where we're going to keep going with. <laughs> out, re- out rebounded Semo 44 33. Had a ton of points in the paint, both uh, just with the presence of the big guys and also just getting in there with some of the quickness that they have. Uh, from here, it's a little bit of a. It's dead week, so it's dead. Uh, <laughs> Very insightful, that. Yeah, dead week, it's dead. And then finals week. So two games in the next 12 days or 13 days from here. Yeah. Um, Houston Baptist Saturday at 4 p.m. and then you get Butler up in Indianapolis on 5 p.m. on December 17th. And as so. and as intriguing as that matchup looked before the season, uh, even more so the way both teams have played so far this season. Absolutely. So just one more uh, anticlimactic uh, game in between. Just one more. You know, if if this was a baseball game, this would be awesome. Except maybe not because it's December and it's cold and rainy out. And Houston Baptist that is. Uh, they're a pretty good baseball program, but uh, no, nah, I don't know so much basketball. Yeah, I'm, I'm, so. I have no idea. One more stinker. We'll study up on them for the next five days. Oh yeah, we're gonna we're gonna give you a whole uh, dossier on uh, Houston Baptist basketball. No, we're not. Um, that'll do it for us here, guys. Um, Eighty-three fifty-five win over Semo, Southeast Missouri. Um, you got anything else? I'm done. I'm done too. See ya. See you guys.